Winslow Homer is one of my favorite artists. And so I went to the National Gallery's great collection of Homer, and especially Homer's watercolors, because he's one of the great American watercolor painters, to choose something to talk about. And the picture that I chose is not the grandest of the Winslow Homers here, but it's an important one because it's one of the first watercolors that he painted. It goes back to the beginning of what would be 30 years of a really great, great career in watercolor painting. So it's interesting to see where he starts. There's a number of special reasons why I picked this picture. The first reason is the subject is just delightful. I mean, two little boys waiting. This is pure summer. It's just the encapsulation of childhood and that beautiful endless summer day with the little boys waiting with their pants rolled up. So that subject is classic Homer. He's famous for doing this kind of image of childhood. The other thing that's amazing and coincidental about this, 1873, is that that's the year that Impressionism is getting lift off in Paris. The year before, in 1872, is when Claude Monet paints his famous talismanic picture called Impression Sunrise. Well, that picture hasn't been exhibited yet. It's gonna go up in Paris in 1874. Winslow Homer doesn't know about this picture, but he's totally on the same page with Claude Monet, and that's really interesting. Like, what's happening here? It's the same kind of outdoor subject that we see with Monet, painting outdoors, painting the picture from the beginning to the end, outdoors, painting this kind of summery subject. People on vacation, people having a good time, and especially modern people. It confused the critics in Paris and in New York. They thought this was kind of boring, modern, ordinary subject matter. It wasn't particularly artistic. That's also very impressionistic. He seems to have somehow, by spontaneous combustion, discovered Impressionism exactly at the same time as the French painters. Well, they actually did not know one another, and certainly the French Impressionists were not watercolor painters. So Homer's choice at this time to go into this subject matter and take up watercolor was an interesting one. Well, what's happening that would inspire Homer to go to watercolor at this time? Well, looking at his own life, he's in a kind of a moment of crisis, actually. His career is going no place. He's impatient. He's a little restless. He's earning his living as an illustrator, and he basically hates it. He thinks it's drudgery. He wants to break out. He wants to do something surprising. He wants to remake his reputation. So he's in a moment of change, and that and he turns to watercolor, which in itself is that's surprising because watercolor at this moment is not a high prestige medium. It's seen as a kind of thing that look, girls in finishing school use or that commercial artists use. It does not have a lot of prestige. That's when this thing called the American watercolor movement is a pertinent context for him because just a few years before, a group of artists in New York have established a new society, the American Watercolor Society, and they've set up exhibitions every year. They're inviting everybody. In 1874, he sends in 10 things that have no titles. They're just called pages from a sketchbook. We know from the critics' comments that they are pictures of little boys at the beach from this summer that he spent at Gloucester the previous year. So. Something like this, they were a hit. In fact, they were very controversial. People divided over whether or not they were any good, whether this was appropriate, whether these pictures were finished, whether they should be even seen in an art gallery, or whether they were things that should be kept in an artist's portfolio and just used for reference for more important pictures later. So there was a big kerfuffle here about his work. People made it controversial and people started to buy it. So the reception of the work in 1874 was so encouraging that he sent 34, 34 pieces in the second year. And that too was a huge success. He sold 10 pieces from that. Now that kind of encouragement was exactly what he needed to move forward. And from that point on, he was a committed watercolor painter. So the success there was really created by 
the, this new venue, this new watercolor exhibition, which gave him a lot of encouragement. Well, watercolor was perfect for the kind of subject matter that he'd chosen, because if you think about it, watercolor is great to take outdoors. You can just use it on your lap, you can sit on the beach and paint, and for generations, artists had been using it for travel sketches. So it's ideal to do this kind of spontaneous work out, outside, plein air is what the French artists would call it, in the great outdoors. So watercolor is great for that. It's also on white paper, which is naturally reflective and brilliant. So it's great for painting sunshine and outdoor light because you're getting a lot of light bounce back from the paper. So watercolor is perfect for the kinds of subjects that he's doing. And it's also, it tells the calligraphic drawing in watercolor. You can see the brushwork. You can get the sense of it being made. It has this quality of spontaneity that people in this period loved. But what's actually interesting about his choices here is that instead of using transparent tints, which is the classic kind of watercolor, clear, bright colors, he's using gouache, gouache or opaque watercolor. It's sometimes called body color, which is naturally not transparent, it's thick. And what that is doing, well, if you look up close, you can see how he drags it to give this wonderful sense of the glitter off of the water. He's an expert at using this uh, gouache medium, but it's, it's an unconventional watercolor technique. And he's getting it from his illustration background, because for 15 years, he's been using watercolor as an illustrator. Think about the way that it's drawn in bands, very simple bands. The careful placement of the little boys exactly within the band of the water. The organization of the boats and the warehouses in the back. This is actually done quite thoughtfully, which is so interesting that the people at the time were cranky about these being careless and you know, too unfinished. When actually Homer is a master of using the watercolor a sketchbook page of organizing his subject spontaneously, but nonetheless with this sense of, of design. The National Gallery has a lovely little watercolor called Berry Pickers of kids outside, same little kids, almost all in transparent. So at the same moment, he's trying the transparent technique, he's trying the gouache. You can see him exploring, experimenting, but also pushing the envelope here on what a predictable watercolor is supposed to look like. And he's also engaging with the critics. He's listening to what they're saying. So you can see the critics, number one, complaining about gouache, and number two, complaining about finish. They're very aggravated that he won't finish his pictures, that there's no detail. But he tries, and he comes back the next year with pictures that are more delicate, like the picture you have called the sick chicken. The cute little girl standing holding a baby chick. Very finely painted, actually, and lovely in its, in its discipline. It's actually quite geometric if you look at the organization of it. She's very carefully placed. The critics, they looked at this picture and they said, careless doesn't have enough detail, it's not finished. So you can see Homer's actually slightly annoyed that the critics are still pestering him about finish. Well, this actually was the crux of the issue, is whether this is a finished thing for exhibition or whether it's just a private object for, for practice, for study, for to show to your friends, but not something that you put in a frame and put out on the wall. And so this idea of whether something is a finished object suited for exhibition is actually part of the Impressionist Revolution. And in the middle of the 1870s, Homer is the person who is teaching Americans about this taste. And he, right away, he's got friends. He's got people who love the spontaneity. They love the idea that you're, you're kind of getting an insight into the creative process. You're standing over his shoulder watching him paint. That taste is new. It's new in the 1870s. And Homer is the person who's pushing that taste. He's actually educating his audience in the United States into what a watercolor is supposed to look like, into what a finished sketch might be. And so that's the reason I love this picture.